Okay, thank you for being here today, and um, thank you for the air conditioning. <laughs> As everybody, everybody was, uh, including myself, I didn't put my, uh, my 50 sunscreen on today. I hope I'm not beat red. But anyways, we hope everybody had a great 4th of July, and um, I thought it was a really important point for the state of Rhode Island to show that not only music in Newport, but parades in both Cumberland and Chapachet and in Bristol this year. That's why I got to all of those. So thank you for each one of those communities for hosting the, um, the independent independence day celebrations that we all enjoyed over the weekend. So over the weekend, not only on vaccination update, not only, uh, did Rhode Island meet President Biden's goal to get 70% of the adults partially vaccinated by July 4th? We suppressed that. So we, we surpassed that. Uh, we have 77% uh, of the people 18 and over vaccinated with at least one dose. And 96% of Rhode Islanders are going back for the second doses. That's something Rhode Island should be very, um, very proud of. It's well deserved. And thank you all to everybody in the state for really stepping up uh, along with our health care, uh, our National Guard, workers, municipal leaders, volunteers, police, fire, EMS, and local organizations who pitched in to get shots in the arms, and we're going to continue doing that. A couple highlights uh, for people to know, 96% of people 70 to 79 have at least one dose, 89% of the people 60 to 69, 81% 80 and older, 73% 50 to, to 59. Uh, and, um, and the list goes on. So we got some work to do, uh, but we're going to keep the momentum going, and we're continuing to find innovative ways to make vaccine easy and convenient as possible. So today <clears throat> we announce a new drive-in, drive-through vaccination clinic. Uh, we've had one up in uh, Fidelity in, in uh, Smithfield, and more in the northern Rhode Island. We're going to the southern Rhode Island area, Wickford Junction train station parking garage. Uh, this clinic will be open on Saturdays uh, beginning July 10th and continue every Saturday from 9 a.m. to 12 uh, p.m. to noontime. No point necessary. Just drive up, get your shot. It's really that easy. When I uh, visited the Smithfield location, people were very, very happy. In fact, there were dogs in the car and people were getting vaccinated, so that worked out very well. Uh, and also they had young kids in the car, too. So it was allowed them to really have a convenient way to do it if they were, had those respons home, home responsibilities. I know there's been a lot of talk about vaccination incentives, and I've spoken about this a few weeks back. So today we are launching a, a unique way to encourage even more Rhode Islanders to get vaccinated. The Rhode Island Gives Vax Challenge, uh, a collaborative effort between the Rhode Island Department of Health, Commerce Rhode Island, and the Rhode Island Foundation. Uh, we have Neil Steinberg here today. Thank you, Neil, for stepping up and uh, participating in this. And Neil will be here available for the press uh, after our press event. If there's questions, along with com uh, our um, Secretary Pryor, uh, thank you so much for coordinating this effort. This is how it would work in summary. Every time 5,000 or more Rhode Islanders receive a first dose of COVID-19 vaccine, we will award $10,000 grants to local nonprofits that have served our most vulnerable populations and communities hottest hit uh, for, by COVID-19. Uh, to start off with, there'll be $750,000 in grants, $500,000 from the CARES Act funds, and $250,000 from the Rhode Island Foundation. Uh, to be distributed to nonprofits through our newly established COVID-19 vaccination incentive fund at the Rhode Island Foundation. So we are very fortunate to be able to uh, partner in with the Rhode Island Foundation. Again, Neil, thank you. Uh, $100,000 will be distributed to the first, when the first, uh, for the first 5,000 additional doses and $10,000 grants. Uh, 120,000 will be distributed in the second uh, 5,000 uh, doses, 150,000, 180,000, and finally $200,000 will be distributed with the fifth round of additional uh, 5,000 uh, doses, 5,000 uh, first shot doses. Um, the application portal for nonprofits will open tomorrow, Wednesday, July 7th. Applications will be accepted through July 31st. Uh, the Rhode Island Foundation will have the application on their website, 
and they will also review and determine if applicants meet the eligibility requirements. Eligible nonprofits must have provided program or direct assistance during the pandemic. Uh, this could uh, include organizations that address things like help or children or youth services, food insecurity, behavioral and mental health, and learning loss, just to name a few. So we encourage everybody to continue to get those vaccinations um, and encourage a friend or a family member to get vaccinated. Uh, again, this program uh, is only going to help the, uh, some of the nonprofits that really have stepped up for us in a big way uh, over this 15-18 uh, month time frame. Uh, so I look forward to mocking the next 5,000 Rhode Islands vaccinated and, um, and having the Rhode Island Foundation help uh, to, um, to provide those funds to uh, nonprofits that have really been stepped up in a big way uh, in the state of Rhode Island over the, like I said, during the pandemic and now in a, into our recovery. So this week's community conversation on Thursday, 530, Lt uh, Lieutenant Governor and I will host uh, Rhode Island's 2030 community conversation on Facebook Live to discuss a vision for what our state can look like in the year 2030 uh, if we make the right investments now. Uh, so we're looking at this time around, it's going to be the topic is going to be on transportation and infrastructure. Very timely topic, especially with what's happening in Washington and the leadership from our congressional team there in terms of inf infrastructure dollars. So with that, uh, I'll turn it over to Lieutenant Governor and be happy to answer questions after the uh, Lieutenant Governor gives her. And we did well in Bristol yesterday. We did well yes, in Bristol yes, yesterday. It was fun. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon. So um, have, uh, we had a great uh, weekend this weekend, um, participating on the different uh, parades. Um, I was able to join uh, Governor McKee uh, for Gloucester. We checked Gloucester off, right? Yes, check Cup it off. Post for the Ancient and Horrible Parade, and as well <clears throat> for um, Bristol for the 236th Annual B uh, Bristol 4th of July Parade. And I did the Bristol Parade twice. <laughs> yes, this is true. <laughs> Once again, I uh, just want a reminder to everyone that is dealing with the high temperatures out there that we have uh, calling places. So you have to go to the website of the Rhode Island Emergency Management Association and we have a list of a statewide calling uh, locations for you to go. And I have to remind everyone that we still have funding available for those of you that need assistance uh, to pay for your um, internet connection. Up to $50, you can get that available to you. And another reminder is uh, if you need assistance to pay the, um, the rent or to pay for your utility, also call 211 uh, for both uh, information that's going to be available for you. Uh, I'm excited to announce that my office is um, setting up the housing, a virtual housing summit in collaboration with Secretary Pryor and the Office of Commerce. We're gonna, we have a day, so uh, save the date of July 21st. We're gonna have the first conversation around um, the topic of housing and there's gonna be information on the next time when we get together about how to register um, for the summit. Um, so the governor gave us the, the good news. We are doing great with the vaccinations, and thank you everyone that is doing, um, making sure that's vaccinated. And I'm just going to put another plug now and in Spanish, I want to say, a todos ustedes que no se han vacunado todavía, todavía hay tiempo para que uh, busquen vacunarse. Es muy importante, especialmente ahora con la variante que es más peligrosa y se transmite más rápido. Así que asegúrense de que reciban su vacuna. Uh, pueden llamar uh, para buscar los lugares donde están disponibles las vacunas. Llamen al 211 y también le pueden dar esa información. And um, once again, I want to put a plug for the United Way of Rhode Island, the 211. They continue to step up and, and provide information to the community. Thank you. So um, with that, I just want to say that um, looking ahead, uh, we're going to be um, visiting Warren tomorrow. I'm going to go to Warren without you, Governor. <laughs> so I'm going to go to Warren tomorrow for the Hope and Main uh, Makers Market. And on Friday, I'm going to be heading for the small business on the South County. So I'm going to be going to Block Island in the afternoon. 
and um, we're going to be uh, visiting some small business in East Greenwich also. Um, Saturday, uh, we'll be attending the African American Artist Pop Up Market at the Da Vinci Center in Providence. And we're going to follow up with a visit to the Pachico Park um, in North Smithsville. That's going to be on Saturday. So I'm going to go to a few places <laughs> without you, Governor. Check them off. <laughs> but I'm going to check them off. Yes. 